lot of years ago, my oldest son came to me one evening. He said, Dad, buy me this at the store. He just got back from there and he had seen this thing. I did the lounge with cover. Dad, buy me this. I said, what? So what? I like it. I want to get it. So, but think about it tonight. And then we'll talk about it again tomorrow. Everybody told me, Dad, let's get it now. By tomorrow, I may not want it. That was what I said. And that's really a picture so often of what I was thinking. I want it now. Maybe tomorrow, I'll change my mind. We're to pray for our daily needs. I use the illustration in our class for young Greek students. Now, one time, I went to my closet, this is a bunch of years ago, and I counted 16 combinations of jacket pants or suits. 16! How many suits can a man wear at one time? Four, three, two, four, one. Now, I can blame my wife and my children, because I very seldom buy my own clothes. They buy them for me. But nevertheless, I did not need 16 different changes of clothing. Well, one of my daughters said, that was just you. Here's your children. Same one that made me a low one, sorry about But then she was in high school this time. Come down to breakfast one morning, she said, Dad, I don't have any clothes to wear. Well, of course, she had clothes off. Fathers aren't too bright sometimes. So when she went to school, I went up there, I looked at her and she had 16 or 18 different combinations of dress or blouse and skirts. She got home and I said, hey, what are you talking about? This is what I got. Oh, Dad, why did I don't have anything? No. Give us a day our daily bread, our needs. Not overload us with stuff. One thing is guaranteed. When I depart the flesh, and we all will, I can take nothing with me. I will go as I was born, with nothing. The only thing I can take with me is a, is a companion. Patience. I better get here. He goes on in verse 12, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debts. The word there against sometimes it's a translation, is you sin. Sometimes it's a trespass, depending upon how the translation is put. What Jesus is saying there, I need to recognize the fact that I am a sinner. And recognizing this, when I sin, repent, beg God forgiveness, and recognize the fact also that there are others who need forgiveness, others who are sinners. Now we are in this life here, what one is compared, this is our parallel to the Jews, 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. This is our time of testing. Just as wilderness was a type of testing for the Jews. We're going to stumble along. So what he's saying here, forgive us our debts and we forgive our debts. We're begging God's forgiveness and help, not only for our daily material needs and physical needs, we're asking for his help for our spiritual needs. That's even more important. Lead us not into temptation. That sometimes gives the wrong impression that God leads us to temptation. No. He allows it to happen. But he also provides a way of escape. We just have to seek it out. Now he left the first Corinthians 9. Thank that well, God will allow us to be tempted. He will not allow us to be tempted beyond our ability to withstand. And with these temptations will provide a way of escape. We need to be aware of the fact that Satan knows our every weakness. He doesn't tempt me in an area where I'm strong. He tempts me where I am weak. He doesn't look at somebody and say, well, he's got a big wall in front of him to prevent temptation. I'll batter down the wall. No. He looks for a crack in the wall to wiggle through. We will be tempted as long as we are here. We need to 
recognize the fact that temptation is part of what God allows. Not that he, he wants it, but he wants us to grow. James in the first chapter said that as a result of resisting temptation, we do grow, makes us grow. But deliver us from evil, and that's the other half of that. It's not the temptation, but deliver us from evil. He does. He provides us for what we need to overcome temptation. 